Hoop quantum gravity clearly offers more testable predictions than string theory. I'm listening. Amuse me. For one thing, we expect quantized space-time to manifest itself as minute differences in the speed of light for different colors. Balderdash. Matter clearly consists of tiny strings. Carl Sagan said that absence of evidence isn't evidence of absence. But was he really right? The leading contender to string theory, loop quantum gravity, may have just suffered a near-death experience. And that came courtesy of evidence against loop quantum gravity. Hi there. If you're new to my channel, I'm Dr. Brian Keating. I'm the Chancellor's Distinguished Professor of Physics at UC San Diego. I'm an experimental cosmologist who builds telescopes that look for the tiniest effects in the fabric of space-time, including gravitational waves and cosmic birefringence. We talk about all sorts of things on this channel, but today I want to talk about a sad subject and that's the potential death of a once thought to be very promising theory called loop quantum gravity, which in my opinion may have just experienced the coup de grace, the death blow that makes it no longer in contention for a serious competitor to string theory. And that's a bad thing as we'll go into in this video. Whereas string theory is largely untested and some say untestable, loop quantum gravity has been tested and so far it's failed. First off, I should say that I've had many proponents of loop quantum gravity on this podcast and many enemies of string theory. But I think it's actually a very sad thing when a rival to string theory goes down in flames, as loop quantum gravity recently did. The reason for that is that string theory has an almost monopoly hold on theoretical high energy physics. And for the same reason that it's not good to have a monopoly when it comes to phone carriers or cable TV, service providers or mobile phone device makers, <laughs> having at least one competitor is always a good thing. And it's sad for me as an experimentalist to see loop quantum gravity go away effectively. And I know I'm gonna be spend less time on this subject going forward and more time perhaps thinking more deeply about what it takes to overthrow string theory. First of all, what is loop quantum gravity? It's a theoretical framework that aims to unify quantum mechanics and general relativity, providing a quantum theory of gravity. This would be useful in describing the extreme early universe, the Big Bang, if it began with a singularity, classical general relativity breaks down, quantum mechanics breaks down, we can't unify them together, as well as with black holes, at the core singularity of a black hole. So unlike other views of space-time that see their four-dimensional reality as continuous, loop quantum gravity proposes that space-time is composed of discrete finite loops, forming a network known as a spin network these loops are quantized, meaning they exist in minimal, indivisible chunks, similar to the way that matter and energy are quantized into indivisible chunks in quantum mechanics. This approach eliminates singularities, such as those found in black holes, by replacing them with ultra-dense but compactified quantized space-time chunks. This potentially offers new insights into the universe's structure, both at the origin of the universe and in the core singularity of a black hole. This provides a promising solution to the singularity problems that have plagued long sought after unification of quantum mechanics with the as yet classical theory of gravity, formulated by Einstein in his general theory of relativity. So far, string theory has been considered the leading path to unification, but it suffers from a lack of evidence. In fact, there's whole memes online you can find with chapters in books titled The Experimental Evidence for String Theory, and it's a blank page. Loop quantum gravity suggests that the speed of light, however, might have a tiny frequency dependence at extremely high energies. This would challenge the special relativity's claim that light speed is constant for all wavelengths and all frequencies. In loop quantum gravity, this results from the fact that space-time is quantized, that it has a granular structure at the Planck scale. This granularity can lead to what's known as Lorentz invariance violation, and this violation of the most fundamental principle of relativity, going back to Galileo, and then further improved upon by Einstein, states that the speed of light is a constant, regardless of energy or reference frame. You could be rotated, you can do an experiment on a Tuesday measuring the speed of light versus a Wednesday, it should not change. But in loop quantum gravity, there are tiny violations in this closely held underpinning of all of physics known as Lorentz invariance. And you won't get a constant speed predicted not by general relativity, but by special relativity. It's even harder to break special relativity. But to see such minuscule effects. You need to look for them in a very special circumstance, and you need to let these effects accrue and marinate in the space-time foam of our universe for a very long time. Think billions of years. 
Given enough optical path length, enough optical travel time, the tiny effects, no matter how small they are, should accrue to be observable, unless they don't exist. In 2019, this led me and my late great colleague, Andy Friedman, and our collaborators to look for Lorentz invariance violation using catalogs of the polarization properties of distant astronomical objects known as BL LAC objects. If true, loop chronogravity should produce a wavelength dependent rotation of the plane of linear polarization for photons that results from what's called vacuum birefringence, a different speed of light for different polarization states. Vertical polarization would travel faster or slower than horizontal polarization, and that would accrue to create a rotation of the plane of linear polarization. So in loop quantum gravity, the higher energy photons could also travel slightly slower than lower energy ones, ones that exist near the Planck energy scale. This effect stems from the interactions with the space-time foam that produces a tiny effect, but predictable at extremely high energies. And for many years, decades even, these effects were not observable because they required observations of extremely distant objects producing extremely high energy photons. And in technical terms, the deviation from perfect Lorentz invariance wouldn't be visible until you got to the sixth order in frequency or energy expansion. And there things stood for years as loop quantum gravity was tested and found at least to be consistent with both the polarization properties that Andy and I and our colleagues investigated and that previous experiments looking for violations of Lorentz invariance. Until that is, just this month, when a paper called Stringent Test of Lorentz Invariance Violation from LASSO Observations of gamma ray burst 2210098. A. So this paper from a group based in China that I've been in communication with poses a very significant, if not fatal, blow to theories like loop quantum gravity that predict Lorentz invariance violations. So let me explain how this paper challenges most models of loop quantum gravity. LASSO is an acronym that stands for Large High Altitude Air Shower Observatory on a par with my BICEP background imaging of cosmic extragalactic polarization acronym, but that's for many other videos. They observe very high energy gamma ray signals from gamma ray burst that is denoted by its, this number 221009A. I'll just call it the GRB. The paper uses these observations to test for Lorentz invariance by looking for time delays between the photon arrival times across different energy levels or wavelengths. The paper reports that the observations of this gamma ray burst placed 95% lower limits on quantum gravity energy scales that are more than 10 times the Planck energy for what are called linear Lorentz invariance violation effects. You could have quadratic effects, higher order effects, but this one in particular is an improvement on previous effects, including the ones that I've worked on, by factors of five to seven which doesn't sound like much, but it actually, when these effects are taken into account, actually rules out a vast landscape of the loop quantum gravity phase space. So most models of loop quantum gravity predict this Lorentz invariance will take place, and that would manifest as these different time and energy dependencies of the speed of light. Ordinarily, you don't expect red light to get somewhere faster than green light, but in this case, that could happen. But again, the effects have to be very small. That was already known. But so that these observers did is use an extremely distant object, this GRB. And that should give enough time for a tiny effect, no matter how small almost, to actually accrue to produce a significant time delay. But they didn't see that. The paper reports that no significant time delays were found in the arrival times of gamma rays, extremely the highest energy photons that exist. That either means that loop quantum gravity is wrong, or if there are any such effects of Lorentz invariance violation, they must occur at energy scales far beyond those accessible by LASSO, by our polarimetry measurements and others. Loop quantum gravity, at best, survives, but only in a very, very narrow range of possibilities. These are some of the highest energy tests of where you'd expect to see a Lorentz invariance violation resulting from the underlying physics of reality being loop quantum gravity and similar theories. So it seems like these are facing increased scrutiny. I'm an experimentalist. I like to look at hard data and there string theory is a distant second to loop quantum gravity because it doesn't make any observable predictions. I know, I know, I had Kumran Vafa on two or three years ago for his wonderful book, Puzzles to Unlock the Universe. And in that interview, Kumran gave me an exclusive scoop. He said, no, Brian, you're wrong. String theory does predict experimentally observable quantities. I said, oh, really, Kumran? That's the first I've heard of it. 
I have to rewrite these joke memes on the internet, that would be a revolution. He said, no, no, no. String theory predicts the mass of the electron has to be 10 to the minus uh, 30th of a Planck mass or 10 to the plus 30th of a Planck mass, something like that. Some huge range of mass scales such that it's almost making no prediction at all. It'd be like me saying to you, you have to be greater than one gram and less than a thousand kilograms. Okay, it's true, it's accurate and that's correct, but it has zero precision. And if you can't have precision, accuracy is meaningless. As an experimentalist, I like when the theory makes a prediction. My job is to not prove theorists right, it's to disprove everybody else. And the results of the lasso team seem to suggest that theories that produce Lorentz invariance violation are essentially ruled out. And I had a communication with the author of the paper about just that fact. Now, it only rules out the so-called linear aspect, but again, I'm sure our clever colleagues like past guest on the podcast, Carlo Ravelli, one of the foremost champions today of loop quantum gravity, will find ways to escape the bounds that are presented. But the non-observation, this null result of the effects of these tiny loops in space-time and spin network fall, this is a strong blow to such theories. And again, I personally hope for an alternative to string theory. I've talked a lot on this channel about ways you could test theories. I've been in communication with proponents of alternative theories like Stephen Wolfram and Eric Weinstein, how you could test their model, what specific experimentally observable, falsifiable pieces of evidence could be found to refute, not prove them, but to refute them. And so far, we haven't uh, fully fleshed out the predictive power of those models. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about this death blow? Is it as bad as it seems for loop quantum gravity? Should there be another alternative? And if so, what would it look like? Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It's the smallest price I can charge for tuition in this beautiful free universe. And click here for a playlist of theories of everything, including loop quantum gravity, geometric unity, Lisi's E8, and many more. See you next time on Into the Impossible.